In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was... And the Word was who? Hi, I'm Ray Morris. I'm the proprietor of Jehovah's Witness History on Film, and we've been putting some videos together that has to do with the New World Translation Curiosities, where we compare the New World Translation with the King James Version and some other versions of the Bible too. So welcome aboard. As you may have guessed, this time we'll be speaking about the scripture John 1 verse 1. I think of all the 50 or so years that I've been talking about the New World Translation, it seems like that's the number one scripture that a lot of people outside of Jehovah's Witnesses like to discuss. And so that's what this video is going to do. Let's first read out of the King James Version, John 1.1, 1, 1, and do some comparing and see why we have to ask, the word was who? And there it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's about the most common understanding of that scripture, and that's the one that I was born and raised on. When I was younger, I was given by the church, the Lutheran church that I was born and raised in, a Bible, and it's from quite a few years ago, April 7, 1963. So that's almost 60 years, wow. Just call me Methuselah, I guess. But anyway, we've been reading that scripture, the word was God, for all these years. But when I was a teenager, that same Lutheran church handed out these Bibles where they were a little bit easier to understand and had the these and thous, and they had other scriptures that were put in terminology that was easier to understand. Interestingly, the scripture of John 1.1 1, 1 in this Bible reads, Before the world was created, the Word already existed. He was with God, and He was the same as God. Kind of a different set of words for that scripture. Does that really make it easier? What does that mean that he was the same as God? There's even another translation, the New English Bible, that says it almost exactly the same way. When all things began, the word already was, the word dwelt with God, and what God was, the word was. So there's a little bit of difference. Why isn't it that all these Bible translations aren't saying the word was God? And especially the New World Translation. That's one of the scriptures that I first spoke about with Jehovah's Witnesses a long time ago. And it seems like it's an ongoing discussion decades later. Let's read that out of the New World Translation. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was a God. Now why is that word a in there? The word was a God. That's the one that a lot of people seem to have a problem with. So we're going to be talking about that under different subjects. And these are the discussions that I've had over the years. So I'll be relating them from, a, from my point of view anyhow. There are those that will say the New World Translation is a bias translation. That's why they change it, because they're biased. And actuality, I've never read anywhere where they said they were biased from the Watchtower Society, and of course they wouldn't. But instead they do have legitimate, scholarly, scriptural reasons for the difference in the New World Translation. And that's one of the things that we'll be talking about here. One common thing that we hear said about the New World Translation is that there are no other translations that say the Word was a God. Well, actually there are, and that's one of the things that we like to show here. One of them is the Newcomb's Translation, where it says the Word was a God. And interestingly, Robert Young, who was one of the top scholars of a century or so ago, says, in his commentary on John 1.1, 1, 1, and the word was God, more literally, and a God. Example, a divine being. So there are other translations that say a God, and I have a link below in the comments where we can go to a page, 
and they have over 200 translations that say something other than the word was God and many of them are and the word was a God and there's actually reason why there are those that say and the word was a God. Another thing I've heard, another Jehovah's Witnesses too, is that the New World Translation puts the word A in there, but it's not in the original Greek. And that is true. There is no word A in the original Greek for this text, and there's reasons why. And it might take a little bit of school background to talk about it and some notes, because there's a lot of things for me to remember here. Now we do have in our English language a word A, like we would say a book. And if you were to ask your school teacher, she would tell you that the word A is an indefinite article. And we also have in the English language another word, the. Your English school teacher would say that that is a definite article, the. And so we have those two in the English language. We might say, this is a book, indefinite article, or this is the book, definite article. It's talking about something a little more specific. Also, I can say, I live in a white house. Now, if I were to say, I live in the white house, especially here in America, that would portray something a little different. Likewise, I can say this is a Statue of Liberty. I don't know how well you can see that. I can hold it in my hand, but if I were to say I have the Statue of Liberty, well that I couldn't hold in my hand. Again, the indefinite article could be just about anything. The definite article would be speaking about something more specific. And one other side note too, in that list of indefinite articles, we also have the word an, just in case we want to speak of an egg for an example. So we have at least two indefinite articles in English, a and an, and we have one definite article, the. Now one difference between English and Greek and Hebrew, the original languages, we do have indefinite articles in English, a and an. And we have the definite article, the. In Greek and Hebrew, they don't have indefinite articles, although they do have definite articles, the. So if we were speaking Greek, we would say something like, this is book, or, this is egg, whereas we would say this is a book or this is an egg. Now what does all this have to do with John 1.1? 1, 1? This is where we're going to find out. To keep this simple, what we're going to do now is read a verse from the Bible out of King James, and this is from the Sermon on the Mount. This Bible verse is Matthew 5.14 and 15, and it says, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give it light unto all that are in the house. Now I purposely stress the words a and an because we're going to compare what we see here with what is in the original Greek, and that's the picture we'll see next. Now here we see the same scripture, we see English words, and just above them are the Greek words that they're translated from. We can see a city, a hill, and a lamp, and there are no Greek words for the word a. It's added. The King James translators added those words. And if you notice the words that are highlighted in orange, we see the measure, the lampstand, in order to make it sound better in English, those words the are replaced with the word a. Again, a is inserted into the text where it wasn't originally there. Here's another King James example from Acts 28 verse 6. This is when Paul was bitten by a poisonous snake and they were surprised that he wasn't dying. 
Notice what it says here. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Notice a god here. Here's another sample of the original language, and if you notice, there's no word a on this scripture either. The King James translators inserted the word a when there was none in the original language. Just one more quick sample from Exodus 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh. And here we can see a god is in English, but it isn't there in the original language. In this case, it's Hebrew. But even still, the King James translators added the word a. That isn't in the original text. As a matter of fact, thanks to computer technology, we can do a word search throughout the whole King James Bible. And what do we find? That there are well over 8,000 times the word a is inserted into the Bible that isn't in the original text. Yeah, there could be some exceptions, but still, in the thousands of times, a is inserted in the Bible when it wasn't there originally. Now let's take this all back to John 1 verse 1. Here we have the same type of diagram. We see when we compare the English and the Greek, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was toward the God. There's a definite article before the word God there, but as we continue, and God was the Word. No definite article. And we can go on a little further. This one was in the beginning toward the God. So we see two occasions where there is a definite article before God and one occasion where there isn't. In that case, it is totally acceptable to insert the word A in front of that word God, just as it's been done thousands of times otherwise. And we know there are plenty of other scholars that agree with doing it this way. Here we are again with Young's commentary on John 1.1, 1, 1, and it says the word was God, more literally, and a God. Example, a divine being, just as we noted earlier. Notice what this scholar, James White, has to say about John 1.1. 1, 1. Without going into all the issues, the possible renderings fall into three categories. Indefinite, hence a God. Definite, hence God. Qualitative, hence in nature God. So here he's saying that one of the possibilities is, yes, a God. Here's another noted scholar, Daniel B. Wallace, in his book Greek Grammar. He says, whether it is indefinite, word was a god, qualitative, word was divine, or definite, word was god, is the issue at hand. He does show that is one of the options, and we'll speak about those other options shortly. Now another thing that we hear when we're discussing with people the New World Translation is something called Colwell's Rule. Colwell was a scholar who noticed certain patterns in certain Greek words and because of that he came up with what's known as Colwell's Rule and this is what we're going to talk about and this all happened around the year 1933, not really that long ago. Colwell's Rule insists that you can't say a God Let's check that out and we'll look at some verses and some thoughts on Caldwell's rule. Now without getting too technical, Caldwell's rule says under certain circumstances and under certain wordings, we can take the word the, the definite article, and place it in front of a word that doesn't have a definite article. In that way, the word won't be a god, but instead the god. 
The problem with Caldwell's rule is it doesn't always apply. It has plenty of exceptions that even Mr. Caldwell himself acknowledged. So should it apply to John 1.1 1, 1 here? Well, one book I have here is the NET translation. It's a Bible and it has in the front of it a couple pages of scholars that put the translation together and it even has here we are here not that you can see them I guess even it even has nearly 61,000 notes and comments on the Bible scriptures so let's see what it has to say even more so as far as Caldwell's rule is concerned Here's the comments on John 1.1, 1, 1. and first what I have highlighted in green. Caldwell's rule is often invoked to support the translation of Theos as definite God, rather than indefinite, a God, here. Notice even this book shows that it could be a God. But as we go on in the red highlight, However, Cobble's rule merely permits, but does not demand, that a predicate nominative ahead of an equative verb can be translated as definite rather than indefinite. Well, there you see a little bit more complicated understanding of Cobble's rule. The point that we're looking for here is that Cobble's rule merely permits, but does not demand. Continuing, Furthermore, Caldwell's rule did not deal with the third possibility, that the anarthros predicate noun may have more of a qualitative nuance when placed ahead of the verb. From a technical standpoint, though, it is preferable to see a qualitative aspect to the anarthros god in John 1.1. So we notice from here a word qualitative, and qualitative simply means somebody or something that, with a quality. And that's one of the reasons why the Moffat translation and the Goodspeed translation will translate the word was divine, as we can see here. Divine is a quality that Jesus had, which is different than saying that he is God but a quality. Just like somebody might call me Methuselah. That's a word, but yet it's describing a quality that some people are saying I have. And even in the Bible, Jesus and other scriptures called John the Baptist Elijah. Now that doesn't mean that he is Elijah, it's just using the word, the term Elijah, to describe qualities that John the Baptist had or is qualitative of John the Baptist. And as we can see here in the New World Translation, the footnote for John 1.1 1, 1 brings out that qualitative, a divine, that applies to Jesus, a God. Now there are very few commentaries that will say that you can't interpret the scriptures to say a God because once you do, now you're bringing in polytheism. In other words, more than one God. And one thing we need to ask is, does the Bible create its own form of polytheism? Because the Bible itself has instances where God himself is calling people gods. Here's a curious thought from Vine's Expository on page 160, it adds a little bit more to this. And it says, under the heading God, the word is used of divinely appointed judges in Israel. And here we read in Exodus 21, 6 out of the King James Version, then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost and onward. But we're focusing on the word judges the original Hebrew word is God. So here we see the King James translation acknowledges that sometimes humans, in this case judges, can be referred to as gods, their qualitative purpose. 
Another example from Psalm 8, verse 5. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Note the word angels. In the original language, the word is gods. So even these angels are being called gods in a qualitative sense. The New World Translation translates the same scripture, God-like ones. Another example where God himself is calling people gods is in Psalm 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Verse 6, I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So we can see here, God is speaking, calling these people, children of the Most High, calling them gods. Jesus quoted this same psalm when the Pharisees were in conflict again with Jesus. It says here, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? So we can see here, Jesus himself is saying it's okay to call people gods, and at the same time doesn't bring on additional gods or polytheism. Now, not too many commentaries go that route because that doesn't really make sense. For instance, as we mentioned, somebody says, I'm Methuselah. Does that mean there's more than one Methuselah? Or as the scriptures say, John the Baptist is called Elijah. Using the word Elijah to describe him, does that make more than one Elijah? Does that create another creature of some sort? No. Again, these words are used to describe they're qualitative, they're not creating anything new. So if someone says that saying a God is making more than one God, well, that's not much more than just being silly. Okay, so I don't wanna forget, if you wanna find out even more of why John 1 verse 1 is translated so in the New World Translation, the best source is jw.org. No better place to find out why the New World Translation is translated as it is, but even to find out what other beliefs Jehovah's Witnesses have that are always based right off any translation of the Bible. Certainly the New World Translation isn't just because it's biased, like some people say. Yes, there are other translations that say a God, and there are legitimate reasons for inserting the word a in uh, John 1.1. 1, 1, the word is a God. If somebody ever says anything about Caldwell's rule, whether you understand it or not, we know that it doesn't necessarily apply. Nobody can force it to apply to John 1.1, 1, 1, and uh, all indications are is that it doesn't apply at all. And there's an advantage when the New World Translation says the word was a God, because a lot of Bible translations that say the word was God might mislead people into thinking that it's saying Jesus is God, when that's not the case at all. The scriptures, the Apostle John wrote that there's a quality that Jesus has that's godly, that's divine, or that's God in the sense of describing the quality that Jesus had. So that might about round everything up. It's always good to compare the New World Translation and all Bible translations. It's good to have more than one. And we hope that you got a little bit of something out of this anyhow. And my usuals, you can leave a comment below. You can hit the little bell so you get more notices about what's going to be posted on uh, Jehovah's Witness History on Film. And also subscribe. There's a subscribe button down there somewhere. And there's a like button too. If you click the like button, it causes YouTube one way or another to have those liked videos show up a little bit more for other people. So that's about it for now. I'm glad you were able to take some time to watch here. 
and hopefully you'll be ready for the next one that I have coming up to before too long. Thank you very much and we'll catch you around. Bye-bye.